Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. And uh, today we are going to talk to Ishanka Saikya. He's a very old uh, friend of mine. I've known him for, uh, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years now. It's been it's been quite a while. Like It almost feels like I've known him for ages. And uh, Ishankar is currently a solution architect at um, at Panasonic. And uh, I, you know, without further ado, let's go ahead and start uh, speaking to uh, Ishankar himself. And uh, firstly, uh, Ishankar, I'd uh, like to say uh, welcome and thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, uh, to speak to me. I think it will be a very interesting conversation learning about you and learning about your experience and stuff like that. Yeah, Agnal, uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity to uh, you know, talk to you. And it's always a pleasure to uh, discuss things with, uh, with you. Yeah. Thank glad. you, Ishankar. So, uh, let's get started, Ishankar. But um, you know, I, I just want to know, like, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, an introduction, uh, who you are, what do you do, and uh, maybe talk a little bit about your journey and stuff like that, please. Yeah, uh, sure. So uh, I'm an uh, electrical engineer, you know, based on uh, my educational uh, background. Um, like, I I came to United States in uh, 2009 for my higher mm -hmm. uh, studies. Um, uh, and, and currently, I'm a solutions architect in Panasonic uh, North America. Um, I, I, I'm part of, the, uh, of their Android engineering department. Um, I, I joined this company back in 2013 as an intern. And uh, you know, I, I, was a, I was a product engineer after that. Uh, then back in 2016, I actually moved to Singapore to uh, you know, uh, uh, work as a sales engineer. Uh, in the same company, Panasonic, but Panasonic uh, Asia Pacific, that's based out in uh, Singapore. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a good, pretty good experience. Um, and then back in 2018, I came back to uh, United States. And uh, since then, I've been here. I live in Chicago. Um, so, yeah, that's a uh, quick uh, overview of my uh, journey here. Interesting. So you use the term uh, solution architect, uh, Ishankar. It sounds like a really uh, sounds like a really cool, you know, role. So can you tell us a little bit about a solution architect? What does that mean? And you know, what do you do? And uh, I guess um, you know there'll be folks who are watching who are probably not very technical. So is there a way you could um, you know remove the tech layer out of it and for a layman maybe explain what a solution architect? isn't what they what they do Shankar, please mm -hmm. yeah uh, right like uh, you know so solutions architect it it may sound like a fancy name uh, right but uh, you know overall it's uh, it's basically a, a person who has a technical uh, technical background mm -hmm. but uh, you know he has the uh, leadership uh, skills in, in order to be a person in in charge to um, of leading the practice of designing, uh, describing, and managing a, a, a solution engineering um, in, in relation to a specific business uh, problems. Um, so, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's basically, uh, you know, so, so solutions engineering is something that has uh, come up uh, in, in over the past few years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something uh, new, like when you sell a, a a product like hardware or a software product. Um, nowadays, uh, customers and, and, and or clients, they would like to see uh, a whole package of, uh, of product. Uh, you, you, you not just only focusing on the hardware or the software, but mm -hmm. uh, the whole, um, I would say the whole solution that, uh, that will allow to uh, solve the uh, problems mm -hmm. uh, or, or something that fits their uh, requirement. So as a solution architect, you take the in charge of that role and uh, you sort of become a trusted advisor to the client and then you Very interesting. help them with, uh, you know, from the start till the end of a project and, uh, you know, you support, support a project from a technical perspective. Um, and uh, you also, you know, work very closely with the account managers as a sales team, mm. uh, you know, to be in projects and work on that. Interesting, yeah. interesting. So, can you give us an example, maybe, of a product uh, that you work in, work with uh, Ishankar? So, can you just like talk about, you know, some product? For example, I mean, I guess I get what what a solution architect does, but uh, 
just so I could relate to the role a little more, can you tell us a little bit about here's a product that you work on so that, you know, I can be like, oh, okay, so that's starting to make sense, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, uh, you know, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm part of the Android engineering team. So mm-hmm. uh, let me just focus on the products um, I work on, right? So uh, like uh, Panasonic uh, uh, North America, we, our division actually, we, uh, we make uh, tough book products. So these are rugged mm-hmm. computers. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, since I'm part of the Android engineering team, um, um, I, I focus on Android tablets and handheld uh, uh, scanners. So mm-hmm. Uh, these are some uh, special products which are meant for uh, special purposes. Uh, these are rugged computers, so you know they they are meant to uh, survive in extreme conditions. Uh, they they are waterproof. They don't break if you uh, if something drops from uh, a certain height. Um, mm-hmm. You know they have inbuilt uh, scanners for use for specific purposes. You know, so mm-hmm. I'll, I'll let me give you one uh, very quick examples. Um, like, you know, like transportation and logistics uh, sector, uh, they, these sectors, they, they use these barcode scanners, mobile devices, which have barcode mm-hmm. scanners in order to um, pick up uh, packages. So our devices, they, they exactly fit this uh, requirement. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, like in public safety or utility uh, companies, uh, public safety, they need a they need a tablet or a laptop. Uh, this that's the uh, Windows, but uh, you know uh, Panasonic makes uh, Windows laptops also, Windows uh, rugged laptops. So mm-hmm. these in public safety, let's say, um, you know, let's say a police vehicle, right? They have mm-hmm. this laptop docked in their uh, in their vehicle, and uh, they need to have a barcode scanner or uh, uh, or another communication system attached to it. Um, so yeah, like. Uh, like the, these kind of special products, they they fit their requirements, and then uh, you know they are part of that that ecosystem. So these are the products I work on. Interesting. Sounds sounds very cool, and I think uh, now I can relate to that a little more because these are some of the products that I've seen. So I think you know these rugged laptops, and mm-hmm. I've seen like you said, uh, you know when USPS or FedEx comes home, they just scan something and make me take a signature. So I guess some those are some of the products that you probably work on. Uh, Shankar, so that's, that's, that's very, very cool. Yes, so, absolutely. These sectors, they are, yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. So another question, uh, Shankar, is, uh, you know, like just talking about uh, a solution architect. So what makes a good uh, solution architect or uh, what, mm-hmm. you know, what, uh, what makes a successful uh, solution architect, uh, Shankar? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, like, Solution architect role. This is uh, to me, it's a leadership role, you mm. know, and uh, you should definitely have a very solid technical background, at least five to six years of experience uh, working with uh, that particular product. It can be mm. a hardware, it can be software. You know, it depends on the what company you work for or what other products you actually uh, work on. So, so definitely the technical uh, background, uh, but uh, you know, you should be a people's uh, person. You know, you should be able to uh, work with the sales team, with account managers, um, should be able to understand mm-hmm. a customer's, uh, you know, uh, business uh, model. You should have uh, good analytical skills, um, you know, and uh, you should have good project management skills as well because, uh, you know, you are like the in charge of that, that particular project. So you should have these kind of uh, skills and pretty solid communication skills because you are um, like the, uh, uh, you know, you, you are in the direct uh, customer uh, interaction. Interesting. So mm-hmm. you should be able to, you know, sell the product and uh, give a solid uh, overview of the products in front of uh, clients. So uh, that's there. And yeah, there, there is another thing like it, um, you know, I travel, I, at least I used to travel a lot for, for this role, like almost 70% of my time. Um, I used to be on flights, meeting clients and, uh, you know, spending, having meetings in, uh, sometimes in hotels or cafes and uh, that sort. Yeah. I mean, it sounds cool, but sounds a little tough as well. It looks like so, uh, yeah. so related to that, uh, Shankar, can you, uh, tell us a little bit of, um, you know, like a day in the life, like a day in the life of a solution architect, or what does a, 
uh, what does a solution architect generally do maybe or what's a day in the life maybe that's that's probably the best way to put it yeah yeah so um you know, uh, and one thing I, I, I couldn't mention, I'm sorry. Uh, I actually uh, focus more on pre-sales engineering. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to, to, so to me, yeah. like driving sales is one of the biggest motivation. So I work very closely with uh, account managers. So day to day, it's, um, you know, we, we try to keep a track of all the projects and uh, possible, uh, possible opportunities on, on different uh, projects that are our, uh, clients, they could be new or the ongoing um, projects with certain customers. So mm -hmm. that's basically working towards the uh, sales. Um, and then, uh, of course, like uh, resolving technical issues, uh, technical issues, it could be something related to networking or uh, since I work on Android products, it's mm -hmm. mostly related to Android app development, uh, troubleshooting applications, um, and then uh, resolving issues with uh, hardware um, or software. And also mm -hmm. like third party accessories, uh, these kind of uh, things. And um, I do work on uh, many like ongoing projects. Mm -hmm. So those I have to manage those, those things. Um, and uh, I, I also work on, um, you know, managing devices for, uh, for our clients. Interesting. Um, you know, mm -hmm. this is mainly called Android uh, device management mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, you know, it, it's like, uh, you know, let's say you have your company uh, phone, right? Hmm. And uh, you you sometimes hear from your IT admin that they will ask you uh, to install or say that your you know your device is going to get updated, uh, apps will get updated. Yes. So this is like managing these IT. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Let me say mobile devices in in the IT mm -hmm. admin. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another part of my uh, my day to day work. Actually. Interesting. So you, you seem uh, very knowledgeable about, uh, uh, you know, solution architecture and you seem very passionate about it as well. So mm -hmm. I guess uh, a question is, uh, w was this always a calling? So did, did you always, did you always want to do this or was there a specific uh, trigger when you were at certain, you know, at a certain point in your life and you realized, Hey, that's, you know, that's probably what I want to do. So can, can you tell us how, how did you get here in terms of, was it the always you wanted to do or was it a trigger, Shankar? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you know, uh, as I said, right, I, I joined as a product engineer in, in Panasonic. That was, um, I was in New Jersey. I was back mm -hmm. in 20, 2013. So at that time, I was very much focused on uh, creating products. So I would only see till the point where the product is done. And I, mm -hmm. I had less customer interaction, uh, direct customer interaction, you know? So then when I moved to Singapore, uh, my role changed a bit and it was more of a pre-sales engineering. So like every day I used to meet uh, clients, meet different customers. So then I realized, you know, like after you create a product, after you sell a product to a, to a client, the the things after that matters a lot like whether the clients they actually like our yeah. product or not so that changed my outlook and mm -hmm. you know after coming back here now i'm in a very customer facing uh, client facing role mm -hmm. um, so yeah i would say that uh, that changed uh, uh, a bit and also you know mm -hmm. like i'm i'm pretty passionate about the products i work on because these products are meant for you know, uh, the development of our, uh, our society uh, and the products, these are not consumer products. They are all used by enterprise or public safety or utilities. Um, mm -hmm. So that also drives me. Uh, like I, I feel I'm doing a, a noble, noble cost through the Interesting. Uh, uh, working for them. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, another question, uh, Shankar, and you kind of touched upon this in terms of travel and you said, uh, you know, something related to uh, hotels and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. airports and coffee shops and all of that. So uh, it somehow seems like to me that um, a solution architect travels a lot, but uh, I think in the last six months, I'm sure you have not traveled a lot. So how, how, how do you see one, how have you made, how have you managed in the last six months? And two, uh, 
you know of course the last six months is more of us we don't have a choice we cannot travel but yeah. but how, how do you see a uh, solution architecture going forward once people can travel so what what do you see as the future of uh, solution architecture you know in a post uh, covid 19 world uh, shankar yeah yeah that's a very good question actually so you know well uh, when our like business travel ban was started uh, with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so I was not really sure like how things would work out, you know, since mm -hmm. I'm in a, a very customer facing role every, every week I take flights and I wasn't sure like how it's going to work out. But, uh, you know, uh, luckily things has been, things have been better, you know, uh, and I've been more uh, efficient, been able to uh, manage my time in a much mm -hmm. better way. Um, like, uh, you know, I, I've been able to uh, create very efficient product demos and presentations and I've managed to, um, you know, have some pretty good uh, customer meetings with these kind of virtual uh, meetings using mm -hmm. all these tools. Mm -hmm. you know. So, um, you know, moving forward, I, I believe that, um, you know, uh, of course, the, like business travel is going to change forever that, that I, I think that's, that's going to happen. Um, yeah. It could be more of a mixed, uh, you know, hybrid way. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, we will be more cautious about whether a uh, face-to-face -face meeting is really needed yes. or, or yeah. not. Uh, yes. So we'll have to see like how true, yeah, how much is required. So, yeah. Okay. So, so what I'm hearing is it'll probably be, it'll move from, uh, you know, very customer facing, you know, meet as often as possible to like a hybridish kind of mm. model. Is that, is that, is that my understanding then Shankar? Is that, so yes, you yes, that'll, so? be, okay. that'll be there. Yeah. But of course, like, um, um, you know, and we need to be mindful of the clients, uh, uh working environment as well. Yes. So yeah. they might not also want, uh, people to visit that often. Mm -hmm. uh, that also we need to keep in keep in mind. But Absolutely. again, if there is issue, then of course we have to go, and then uh, mm -hmm. um, you know we need to. Uh, uh, of course, we'll be all wearing masks. Uh, I, I don't see that uh, going away. Uh, True. You know, we have to uh, keep in mind the social distance and measures. So. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so uh, another question, uh, Shankar, that uh, that really you know um, I've, I've always had on my mind when it comes to. Uh, a lot of roles outside of mine is uh, is about career progression. So, yeah. you know, uh, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, how does career progression for a solution architect uh, look like? So, for example, <clears throat> do you go into people management? Do you go into product management, project management, program management, or you know, or do you just go up the ladder in terms of you know, uh, solution architect and some senior solution architect, principal architect or something like that. How, how does career progression look like uh, Shankar in, in the solution architecture space? Yeah. So in this role, uh, if somebody wants to be, you know, in the technical line, then uh, of course uh, there is senior, there is lead uh, principal architect, or you can in fact uh, lead a team of solution architects, lead a team of engineers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can also be uh, get into, you know, people management, um, you know, some people, they can in fact move to uh, product management as well. So a lot of uh, good opportunities. Interesting. So I guess uh, what I'm hearing is that it's going to be um, a, a wide variety of options for uh, people, right. depend, really depending on their interest. So that's, that's, that's very interesting. So uh, uh, my last question is Shankar and last question just for this session, because uh, actually, you've gotten me more interested, and I have a lot, a lot of other questions in mind. But I guess I, I want to respect your time, and uh, I just, you know, I'll, I'll probably keep this as the last question. Is, is, uh, you know, imagine there is a budding, um, uh, you know, electrical engineer, let's say, like yourself, you know, maybe a decade, decade and a half ago, uh, who's who's looking to uh, become an electrical engineer or someone like that. And let's say anyone who's interested uh, to get into the solution architecture space, what would your advice uh, to them be, Shankar? So what would you uh, tell them in terms of what kind of degrees to pursue, courses to do, books to read, certifications, any kind of advice from a career perspective to aspiring solution architects, uh, Shankar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
so since this is a, you know it's a, it's a, of course it's a technical role right so um i would say a degree um, degree would be a like bachelor or masters in uh, mm -hmm. engineering and focusing on areas like you know computer science electrical engineering mm -hmm. um you know uh, data science or it in in general that would be uh, like the basic background you should have mm -hmm. and and since this is a leadership role it needs a good amount of experience at least like five to six years of uh, experience working with a uh, working with a product uh, before mm -hmm. you are uh, you know able to uh, go out there and uh, be in front of customers and uh, helping the sales team to uh, sell that uh, that product um, so in order to develop that kind of uh, confidence it, it definitely needs that uh, that number of years mm -hmm. but um, i wouldn't be very rigid about like 5 to 6 years of uh, experience that is most of the companies they put that uh, requ uh, that requirement mm -hmm. uh, it depends on person to uh, person to person so mm -hmm. somebody can uh, can become an expert even uh, very quickly uh, on certain Same. products um now you asked about like certifications uh, right so yes you know if you are focusing on android products and there are uh, android enterprise uh, certifications by, offered by google uh, then if if somebody is into cloud computing then of course there are uh, you know the certifications offered by the top 3 uh, cloud computing uh, providers like aws uh, there is google cloud uh, provider gcp and then uh, azure by microsoft mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can do certifications on net network security uh, data science uh, there are a lot of uh, online certifications available um, uh, offered by many colleges on the uh, mooc platforms like coursera you know edx udacity etc so Interesting. So the so what I'm hearing is there is a there are a lot of different options depending on like how you you know how how you want to do so it could be the cloud side it could be yeah. you know it, look it up on Coursera and uh, I guess you said Udacity and a lot of other places as well and if you know um, of course you know a good a good experience and understanding of technology and all of that is is uh, is probably needed so okay that's that's very interesting so Shankar I have a lot of questions, a lot of questions for you, but I also want to be respectful of your time. And, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I want to keep this as short as possible, but, uh, uh, but I have a lot of pending questions based on what you said about the kind of products you work on, some of the challenges that you see. And, you know, I also know that, um, uh, your, uh, you know, you worked internationally. So you mentioned that, uh, you know, you worked in Singapore, you worked in the US, and I know you worked in Japan as well for quite a while. So yeah. I have a lot of questions about all of that, but I want to keep that for another day. And, uh, you know, I just want to be respectful for your time, but, you know, please, uh, I uh, I hope you will come back. But before that, I just want to say like how I started, I really want to thank you for uh, taking the time. And uh, I think this was uh, very insightful and very, um, you know, I, I would say I've, I've learned a lot. Maybe that's the best way to put it, right? I've learned a lot listening to you and uh, I look forward to learning a lot more from conversations like this about uh, some of the products, about solution architecture, what are the best practices. And I also want to learn about, you know, different um, uh, cultures and, you know, how, how, how different countries work and stuff like that. So uh, maybe for another day, but for now, I just want to thank you for uh, your time and uh, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Agnil. And, uh, you know, I would love to talk more with you. And uh, I, I enjoyed uh, discussing these things uh, with you. So, yeah, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.